What are the roots of circumcision of infant males in the West? What are the evolutionary advantages, if any, of foreskin? So, okay, this is where we finally get canceled. I know this discussion, and it is a catastrophe. Yep. Um, here's the key piece of information that you need. Um, I have deployed years ago now on my channel something that I used to teach from, which was the adaptive test, a test to tell whether something should be assumed to be the product of adaptive evolution. And it consists of a diagnosis of whether something, a characteristic, a behavior, or a structure um, is complex, whether it has uh, a cost, whether that cost can be reduced, and yet it persists over evolutionary time. The logic being, <coughs> if you have such a structure, like the appendix, the appendix is a complex structure that really is independently enough to suggest the role of adaptation in its creation, but to be conservative. It is a structure that can be reduced. Um, so that is to say that the expense that goes into the appendix can be reduced over time, and yet it persists, which implies that it is paying the cost of it. And as we discussed last time, in the case of the appendix, that would also be the risk of having it. And therefore, the adaptation is of a magnitude that we can approximate, even if we don't know what the advantage is. Now, the reason I go through that is that in the case of the foreskin and circumcision, they both pass the adaptive test, which is to say the foreskin was built by adaptation. It has a value that more than covers the cost of its production. The removal of it also has an adaptive meaning. The removal of it um, is something that has persisted over evolutionary time in spite of the cost and the risk of it. So what that tells us is that there's a tension here between values. And it may be that in some places, the uh, value of the foreskin outweighs the risk of removal. It may be that in other places, the reverse is true. It may be that in some cultural contexts, the value of it uh, exceeds the cost of removal or vice versa. And so that is the kind of answer we are looking for. Anybody whose answer comes down to um, this, is, uh, this is mutilation and should be halted because it has no value, has misunderstood, misunderstood the implication of circumcision being a longstanding practice, whether it, you know, it could be that the circumcision is a bit like the appendix in the sense that the thing that made it valuable is no longer present in our environment, and therefore at this point the value is not there. There's obviously lots of debate over the implications for disease. So there was a very um, popular piece of research that suggested that it was preventative of uh, things like AIDS. It may be that hygiene compensates for that advantage. It may be that that um, that data did not indicate what people thought it did, that the methodology was no good. So it is a very complex environment. But the thing you want, look, if you're going to walk away from the Dark Horse podcast with something to say on this topic that will make you um, more enlightened than other people, it is that both the foreskin and its removal are adaptive, right? That doesn't tell you which context you should expect preservation versus removal, but it does tell you you're looking for something at least complicated enough to deal with that set of truths. Thank <laughs> you.